Welcome to Enter the Glory Zone on 94.1 FM Wave 94 with Dr. Edith Davis. Spiritual believers, I've spent a lot of time talking about the unity of the body of Christ. I've lately been talking about doing good for evil. But this is the most recent rhema word that God has given me. And it kind of clarified why people sometimes tithe and do good deeds and do all these wonderful things, but they don't eat the good of the land. In other words, they don't see the fruits of the benefits of dedicating themselves to the kingdom of God. And this is the secret that the Holy Spirit recently gave me in regards to that. There is a scripture in the Holy Bible that says, if you are willing and obedient, you can eat the good of the land. I got this um, from um, Pastor Minister Kenneth Hagen Sr. And one of my good friends, Latanya Curry, sent me this um, clip from his school. You know, he started Rama Bible College. And he is one of the generals of the kingdom of God here on this earth. And he was having financial problems. And I also, even though I've been a tither for many, 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 many years, um, decades, I've been a tither. Even though I'm a giver and I give, I, I come from a family that are, we are sacrificial givers. We know how to give sacrificially, which is a gift in itself. I still had some financial problems. And I kept, I believe God's word. God does protect me from the devourer. Don't rest assured, God's word is true. He does protect me from the devourer. However, I wasn't seeing the overflow. I wasn't seeing the abundance that I know God describes in his word, that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so great that we do not have room enough to receive it all. And so as I meditated on this and I continued doing the things that God has taught me, which is to be a tither, which is to be a good giver, which is to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto us. Um, I knew that there was something, there was something more that I did not understand. There's something more that, that will take me to the next level so that I can flow in the abundance of God. Right? So I um, was going through some financial hardships because the summer, for me, I'm a teacher, I'm a professor, and the summer, if I don't get a summer appointment or a summer contract, then I have to look at other ways of generating income during the summer. And so I, I identify very closely to God's ministries, and I told God if he would give me monies in the future where I would could flow, that I would support many, some ministries or as many ministries as he enables me to support for the summer months. Because during the summer, ministries take a heavy hit financially. And so those three months. And so do teachers if they do not have a summer contract or have not gotten money secured or set aside. Um, for the summer. And so I still have the pay, take care of my two children. I still have to take care of rent and I still have, I still try to have responsibilities of, for my aunt Mabel and her estate and things like that. And so I am really pushing, um, hard to get to this, this level 
where I flow in money to the point that I can give millions of dollars away to the kingdom of God. So I received the rhema word for um, Kenneth Hagen via my, um, used to be my student and friend, Latanya Curry. And this word was so powerful because Kenneth Hagen kept saying, okay, he he was robbing Peter to pay Paul. He had he had three notes, um, three different pastors sign off on these notes, and all he could do was pay the the interest on it. He had a junk car that he ended up selling. He was living in a three house, a three room house, not three bedroom apartment, a three room house. That means his eldest son. Kenneth um, Hagen Jr. slept in um, the kitchen on a rollaway bed. So his children were, he, re- he found this scripture. He was going through the word and the Holy Spirit highlighted, illuminated this, this, this passage. If you, if you were willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And he said to himself, this is not the good of the land. Now look at myself. This is not the good of the land. Why am I not eating the good of the land? I'm a tither. I, I love God with all my heart. I want to do good for people. I, you know, I try to do good for people. I try to do good for evil. I, I try to walk in forgiveness, not be offended. I'm really, really reaching out and trying to go to the another level with God in my life in every aspect, but in especially in my finances. So just like Kenneth Hagin and Andrew Womack, he went through this too, and Pastor Bill Winston, he went through this too, and Joyce Meyer, she went through this too. Many giants of the kingdom of God have gone through this phase. Um, T.D. Jakes, he went through this too. We, you, I guess you have to go get to this, this crucible, this point in your, in your walk with God where you get that rhema word. And I believe that this is the rhema word. And so Kenneth Hagin said, well, God, I'm not eating the good of the land. And this is when God had told Kenneth Hagin, senior, to walk away from his church, that he was no longer the pastor. And this is where he was being well taken care of. The, the church gave him a home. The church paid him well. The church, they fed them well. I mean, this was the best that they had ever done as a family. And God asked him to walk away from that. Just like Bill Winston, the same thing. He was a, a top executive with IBM making multi six figure income. And God told him to walk away from that and go and, and minister the gospel. Same thing as um, A.R. Bernard. He was a banker on, in, New, on, in New York City making mega bucks. And God told him to walk away and minister and went to Brooklyn and he started his church there. But there was some hard times. So what I'm about to describe is nothing unusual for all the giants in the kingdom of God. (laughs) Elisha. Elisha's family was wealthy. Elisha's family, he was at work when Elijah walked past him that day. His opportunity came his way. And he had to, he actually Broke the plow, made a wooden, uh, set it on fire, slaughtered the oxen as a sacrifice, gave the meat away to the poor, and left his family wealth and riches to follow Elisha for the rest of the days of his life until Elijah was taken up to the heavens to be with the Father, Daddy God, Yuhe Vahe, Abba Father Yahweh. So this Crucible, this this moment, I'm looking at my life. I know God is right. I know God's word is true. But if your word is, if your life is not lining up with what God's word says, it's not God, it's you. Rest assured. So Kenneth Hagin, he's talking to God. He's telling God, 
I'm not eating the good of the land. My, my kids are not eating the good of the land. We're struggling. We're suffering. And God told him, and he could, he was blown away. God told him, he said, you are not qualified. And Kenneth Hagin told the truth. Kenneth Hagin Sr. told the truth. He said he was offended. He said, how can you say I'm not qualified? God, I mean, he had that kind of raw relationship with God. He could talk to God like this. He said, Daddy, Abba, how am I not qualified? I gave up everything to do as you commanded me to do. I gave up everything to follow you. I gave up my ministry. I gave up my home. I gave all this up to be an itinerant minister, to go from place to place, preaching the word of God. And God says, I know you did, but you didn't do it willingly. That's when my mind got blown because I thought that when you obey God, that's willingly, right? I mean, I obeyed God and I came to Florida a and University. I obeyed God and I fought for my marriage, but yet I still got divorced. I obeyed God. And I do good for evil, yet people still take advantage of me. People still don't treat me right. People still use and abuse me. But I'm still not eating the good of the land. What is the problem here? And God told Kenneth Hagin Sr., and it penetrated (laughs) Dr. Edith Gale Davis, my body, my soul, and my spirit. He said, but you weren't willingly. You didn't come willingly. Just because you are obedient to God's word, you need to check yourself and make sure that you are willingly. God is all about your heart. He loves your good deeds. He loves that you tithe. He loves those things, but he wants you to do it Willingly, Kenneth Hagin said it only took him a nanosecond. <laughs> he adjusted his attitude inside himself and said, now, God, I'm willingly. Now I qualify. And I did the exact same thing. I said, God, forgive me. I have been been when I have been obedient. In some cases, I have not been what? Willingly, 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 willingly. Your heart. Your heart must be surrendered to God. He looks at your motives. This is why you can have two people doing the same good deeds, but one is eating from the fruit of the land. One is eating the good of the land and one is not. This is why people that tithe are still sometimes dealing and fighting Lacking poverty in their life. When it says clearly in Malachi chapter um, three, I believe it is, right? Starting with verse nine, that you can, you're stealing from him, right? And you're stealing from him through tithes and offerings. And, 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 and if you will obey him and give the tithes and offerings, he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And not only that, that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so great that you will not have room enough to receive it all. And I said to myself, I got room. <laughs> I have room. God, I, the windows of heaven is not pouring down on me. I'm still fighting the demon of lack and poverty. What is it that I'm missing here? What is it that I'm missing? And the answer is willingly. We must ask the Holy Spirit to cleanse out our hearts. We must ask God to truly, truly have us forgive those who have hurt us. We say we forgive people, but do we really forgive people? We must surrender our emotions. We must surrender our minds. We must surrender our wills. That is why 
Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane went through what he went through. Jesus was under so much pressure. Jesus was a 100% man, yet he was 100% God. The 100% man didn't want to die. The 100% man didn't want to be crucified. The 100% man didn't want to be humiliated. The 100% man didn't want his blood, his beard plucked from his face. The 100% man didn't want a crown of thorns on his head. The 100% man didn't want all the flesh, all the skin ripped off his back where all he had left was muscle and oh, you can see the muscle and bone. That 100% man didn't want to do that. But that 100% man had to do it willingly. This is why Jesus sweated drops of blood. It was so much pressure. He literally sweated drops of blood. And it took him not one time, not two times, but three times asking for the cup to be taken away from him. From him. But that third time he said, not my will, but thy will be done. He willingly, not only was obedient, but he willingly went to the cross. It has to be a willing sacrifice. If you want to eat the good of the land, if you want to fight off the demon of lack and poverty, if you want to walk in abundance, not only that you have an inheritance for your children, but for your children's 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 children's, you must be willingly you must be willing. Your heart, your motives are crucial. It is not only important that you do good. It is important that you do it willingly. Now, let's back up. Don't use this as an excuse to not do good. Don't. Don't say, well, I can't do good right now because I'm not willing. And then you continue doing bad. You continue doing evil. You don't tithe. You don't give. You don't do what's right. Do do it unwillingly in the beginning, but you are going to have to come to willingly doing it, doing good, willingly being obedient before you can eat the good of the land. You will have some benefits from obedience. Absolutely. Positively. But if you want to walk in the abundance, if you want to eat all the good of the land, you're going to have to do it willingly, willingly, willingly. That is a powerful word for those of us who have already been walking in obedience, for those of us who are already tithing, for those of us who are trying to do good for evil, for those of us who forgive those who trespass against us, for those of us who love our enemies, for those of us who want to live by the word, who those of us who want to be a living sacrifice, we we need this rhema word of willingly. Ask the Holy Spirit to examine us because our heart can be sometimes deceitful. I received a rhema word from Ron Carpenter, another minister that I sit under and listen to his teachings. And he said, in the garden, it shows the bent of men versus the bent of women as far as sin is concerned. In the case of men, men have a tendency to rebel. This purity, I'm not going to do it, God. Not going to do it. And women, we are, have a bent towards being deceived. Men, some men can come and talk to us and tell us all sorts of wonderful things and just whine and dine us initially and love on us initially. Right. And when and then we marry them and we sell ourselves out to them and we will literally die for these men. We will sacrifice everything for these men and, their, and our children. And they they didn't want us to begin with. They looked at us as if they looked at us as a as a purse and a nurse. They saw somebody that was going to walk in abundance and money and flourish 
And when they got old and broke down, they knew that this individual would never leave them, would never forsake them. Women are easily deceived, easily deceived. That's why we must stay in the word. We must run everything past Daddy God, our Father, you hey, vai, hey. Run everything past Lord God, Yahshua, Mashiach, Christ Jesus. Run everything past the Lord God, Ruha Kadash, Lord God, Holy Spirit. We are easily deceived. Eve was deceived. The female Adam was deceived by the serpent, deceived by Satan. She was hypnotized. She was mesmerized. He used witchcraft on Eve, female Adam, later named, a.k.a. Eve. And she succumbed to the deception. But Adam, uh, our brother Adam, no, he straight up, he was not deceived. He straight up ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in rebellion. It was pure rebellion for Adam. Do you know that God, if Adam, there was there was three scenarios that we would have probably had a different outcome than what we have today. A, when God, A, Adam slept, the, not even permit the serpent into the garden because he was, he was commissioned to protect the garden and protect female Eve, female, the female Adam, which he later named Eve after the fall. So her name was not Eve when this incident occurred. When he called the Adam, he, when he called Adam, he was calling both the female and the male Adam. He could have not, he could have not permitted the serpent in the garden. He could have slapped the, the fruit out of her hand. He could have said no himself. Those are all positive ways he could have dealt with that. Or the other way, okay, I ate the fruit. He could have stood up and said, I'm accountable. I'm responsible. I messed up, God. You set me up as the head. I, you gave me the directive. But what did he do? He blamed Blame female Adam and God. This is a critical. This is so critical. If we, the believers of Christ Jesus, we, the spiritual believers and listeners who want to eat the good of the land, because Daddy God, Abba Father Yahweh, he gives us what we call the Barak, the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord makes us, makes us rich enriches us, makes us wealthy, waxes us rich. And daddy God has no toil, no pain, no sorrow, no sweat, no tears to the Barak. None of that. He gives that to us willingly and we must willingly receive. The reason why many of us have not received the good of the land, have not eaten the good of the land because we are not receiving willingly. We still think we should be punished. We still think we're not right. I lied yesterday or I, I, I masturbated yesterday. How about that one? You never hear that in the body of Christ. You never hear anybody talking about that in church. But you're not supposed to do that. Did you know that? You're not supposed to do that. It's a sex sin. God taught me back in the 90s. He says, Edith, when your money gets jacked, take a look at five areas. And one of them is your words. Are your words stout against God? Are you, are you not honoring God with your words? Another area, he told me, look, he told me to look at budgeting, tithing, um, giving. And then he also told me to look at, guess what? He told me to look at sexual sins. Sexual sins. If you have sexual sins in your life, doing something, and you could be married and have sexual sins. Do you know that? You could be doing pornography while you're married. You could be masturbating while you're married. You could be doing a lot of things while you're married. You could be holding back from your husband because he took the credit card from you because you went out and spent all the hot family money. And so you're not going to have sex with him until he gives you back the credit card. I'm talking to you, ladies. That's a sex sin. And gentlemen, you could be withholding yourself from your wife because she took the credit card and spent up all the money and you're mad at her. So you don't want to love on her. So those are the sex sins. And guess what? That messes up your money. Sex sins mess up your money. 
And masturbation is a sex sin. I didn't know that at the time when I was growing up. I wasn't taught that, but God had to teach me about that. So it is critical that you do everything with love and willingly do it. Willingly do it. And you will, I guarantee you, you will eat the good of the land. You will eat the fat of the land. Spiritual believers, it's time for us to go to the next level. God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God loves us. He loves us just the way we are. He loves us. Now, does he want us to live an unrighteous life? Does he want us to um, not represent us, him well on this earth? Because everybody knows we're Christian. And if you're doing something that's in the dark, if you're doing something that is wrong, rest assured, Satan's going to make sure that you are found out and in the public and make you a public spectacle because you belong to Christ Jesus, because you belong to Daddy God, Abba Father, you hey, vi, hey, right? So in order for us to rise up to his thought level, we must recognize that God loves us very much and he wants the best for us. But we must line ourselves up with his word with his word and under his word is many, many, many blessings. And of course, we've got to get to the point that it's not about just doing it because God's word tells us to do it. We need to be doing it because we love God. He wants us to come to him willingly. He wants us to become a living sacrifice for him willingly. We must be willing. And if you want to eat the good of the land, you must be willing and obedient. This word is powerful. This word will transform your life right now today. I expect from this day forward to never, ever, ever have to deal with lack and poverty ever again. Unless there's another level of understanding that I don't know yet. But I'm sure that God is going to bless me and those who listen to this word tremendously as we step up to this next level of willingly being willing, willing and obedient to his word. Spiritual believers, one of my big things is tithing. I am a firm believer in tithing and you must. And tithing is simply this. It's the first 10% of your increase, period. It's not second, it's not third, it's not fourth, it's not at the end after you pay your bills. It's, it's in the beginning. And you give it to God first. It is the first fruit and an offering. Now the offering is up to whatever you want it to be. But you must tithe. And now you got to do it willingly if you want to eat the good of the land. I want to close this broadcast with Romans 10, 9. That is, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Thank you for once again joining me on 94.1 FM, Wave 94, Enter the Glory Zone. To be